Okay, let's give that a taste. Now this looks good, it's perfect. Texture wise, that is. This is nice, you're gonna love this stuff. All right. Let's see now if I can manage to get the hummus in a bowl without spilling it here. So I have a little bowl and um, I have some ravigote relish or sweet purple onion relish or Bermuda onion relish, however you want to call it. This is an old French formula for relishes that I'm going to use to garnish this or serve alongside of it, you know. So let's take and put some hummus in our serving bowl. Nice. And let's get rid of this. Okay, now, that was pretty easy. Once you figure out how to use your food processor, of course, you know, which I did eventually. Um, now, here's what I recommend. I recommend, obviously, serving the hummus by itself is good. And there it is, right there. And if you want to serve it with toast points, pita points, crackers, flatbread, whatever your uh, pleasure happens to be. But I'm going to pull some pita out and I'm going to brush it with garlic butter, which is what I like to do. Which I have in a toaster here. And I'm going to show you how I go about cutting that. So this is a, still a little soft, but got enough texture to it in the way I toasted it so that when you put the dip in, the, the piece of uh, pita point will not collapse under the weight of the hummus. So you want to make sure you toast it that much. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to treat this like a bunch of pancakes here. By the time we're done, we're going to stack them up and cut them. But for right now, I'm just going to put a little bit of garlic butter, which I like to do. It kind of makes this more fun, I think, you know. A little bit more garlic, a little garlic butter on all the pitas. And don't buy pitas with pockets for this because you don't need any pockets. Okay, so now there's your stack of pita. Then we just cut it into wedges. Now, you know I have a video for the garlic butter, and I also have a video for the onion relish. I'm going to show you in a minute here to go with this. So, obviously, there's many ways of going about doing this. Let me cut the rest of these real quick. in terms of how you present it. And I'll show you one way that I think it's really neat to be presented. So we'll start out by just putting some chips along the back of this bowl on the one side. You coming in here, Richard? I'm in there. All right. That's just kind of like make sure everybody knows it's time to pick up and grab, okay? And um, I'm going to put the balance of the pita that I have in another little basket over here. And now what I've got, traditionally what you see um, in a lot of the uh, uh, Middle Eastern places, they'll serve black olives and a little bit of olive oil with it. And so I have some black Kalamata olives with pits here, but I'm going to use some chopped unpitted or chopped pitted olives, okay? Put a little pile there. And you got a little something in there to play with. Maybe throw an olive or two in here with the pits in them just for fun. But I've got this sweet purple onion rabbit goat relish here, which, of course, I have a video for you. Go there if you really want to make this particular item. It's a nice little add on to this. Now you can serve it next to this. You can put a little bit on it also, which is what I'm going to show you how to do. But this is a combination of finely minced Bermuda purple onion with capers and, uh, and in this case I put uh, minced scallions and cilantro and basil and capers and a little bit of red pepper, extra virgin olive oil and garlic. This particular relish, besides serving it with a hummus, is especially good with, you can warm it up and put it on grilled steak or chicken or fish. Mostly the meats, but it also works well with the fish. I've done it that way. 
and you can warm it up with a little butter if you want, as long as you don't cook it to death, trying to make it to serve with something, it's okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of the relish and put a little, let's put a little pile of relish here, also with the pita, so people come up to your bowl, they'll have an idea that they can choose to incorporate the relish into the eating of the hummus. You don't want to put this stuff all over the hummus, then they have to eat it with the relish. You don't want that. And then I would just uh, put some olive oil on top of here and a little bit of chopped parsley. And I love this just the way it is. Um, I'm going to eat. I just want to, I want to do this real quick. This is good. Excuse me. And the pita is toasted just right. So when I pick up the hummus, the pita doesn't collapse, like I was saying. That's very important. But you don't want to cook the pita too much. I'm not sure we're looking for pita chips. There's something about the soft texture partially left in the pita that makes it good, you know. Of course, you don't have to toast the pita at all. Or use the garlic, but you just cut up cold pita and lay it next to this, and people will spread it on there, fold it up a little bit, and eat it too. So there you have it. This is traditional hummus, the way it's made in the Middle East, not the way it's sometimes being made in America. Which these they're all good also, but this is the original, and you can start from the original if you want to start, you know, improvising and making other versions of hummus. Okay. Anyway, have fun with it. I'm glad I had a chance to make it for you. Enjoy this item. It's inexpensive. You can make it in advance. And if you make this formula right here that I'm showing you, I guarantee you satisfaction by the people you serve it to. Enjoy it.